Microsoft decides that literally everybody is made of money. The Apple iPad Pro got leaked for the second year in a row, and AMD made by Intel. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, October 2nd, 2025. And we're gonna start off today with some shocking news, which is Microsoft decided to be greedy and they're raising the price of Game Pass to a significantly higher amount. So this is happening with Game Pass Ultimate, which was happened to be the highest tier of their subscription service that gives you games on day one, lets you stream cloud stuff, all of that, but it's coming with a 50% price hike. Microsoft was quoting that this was the best deal in gaming and they have creator participation and player engagement that's at an all time high. So they're going to be evolving Game Pass to offer more flexibility, choice and value to all players, whether you love day one releases, discovering hidden gems or playing across multiple devices and screens across Xbox consoles, Xbox on PC and Xbox Cloud. So this is coming with some changes to the whole thing. We've got Game Pass Essential, Premium and Ultimate coming with different amounts of games with Essential costing $10 a month premium being 15 and now ultimate costing a whopping 30 bones a month also known as the xbox 360 a year deal that's because they don't give you an annual price you just have to pay for it monthly however you can see that there are some differences between each of them but that does constitute a 50 percent price hike for the ultimate setup which has gotten a lot of people riled up where they don't want to necessarily continue with their game pass subscription me being one of them. I canceled my subscription as soon as I heard this because unfortunately, while I originally used it enough to justify the $15 a month that it was costing me to get Ultimate, now I, I can't justify it at $30 a month. I'm not playing enough at, at Xbox games in order to continue with that. The Game Pass for a PC does appear to be staying at $17 a month. They didn't really talk about that a whole lot in their efforts, but they did unveil that there's a whole lot of games that are being added to Game Pass, including a bunch of Ubisoft things, which makes a lot of sense. More games being added to premium and essential getting just a few, including Hades. Pretty good game. Still haven't played Hades 2. Going to get around to that. Just been busy moving. But Microsoft uh, confirming that this move isn't because Game Pass isn't profitable. In fact, in this, they did say that Xbox Game Pass is a profitable business. So the price hike is related to more profit, not necessarily trying to stave themselves off of uh, impending bankruptcy or what have you. This is coming on top of last week, them announcing that they were raising the pricing on the consoles to make it so that the console that cost $500 all the way back in 2020 now costs $600. And so you're also gonna have to pay in order to be on their game subscription service. Let me know what you think of Microsoft increasing their pricing here. Does this change whether or not you're gonna get Game Pass where you're on Ultimate, where you're on one of the lesser tiers? Let me know down below in the comments how flexible you are while I let you know about a flex power supply. What does my arm and this power supply for today's sponsor, Silverstone, have in common? Flex. Get it? Flex. The FX600Z Platinum is Silverstone's first ever Flex ATX power supply with modular cables. It's truly a marvel of engineering that something this small can pack so much power. And at 1,212 watts per liter, this fella is dense. And by that, it mean it's more power dense than Silverstone's recently released Gila 2500 watt model. While Silverstone already sells a 600 watt Flex ATX unit that has fixed cables, the modular FX600Z Platinum improves upon its predecessor with higher operating temperatures and an included 12V-2 by 6 connector for supporting new GPUs. If you're building a small form factor or one U server, definitely give this one a look. Check out the Silverstone FX600Z via the link in the description below. Huge thanks to Silverstone for sponsor. Well, you can't use the Silverstone power supply to uh, power an iPad because it conflicting standards or what have you, but for the second year in a row, a Russian YouTuber got their hands on a new iPad Pro, this time with the M5 chip. Last year, they got it with the M4 chip, and now they're showing off exactly what Apple is going to be unveiling later this month. It's not quite clear how this is happening, but what we do know now is that the M5 iPad is going to start at 256 gigs of memory, 12 gigs of RAM, which is an increase from the previous year of 50% on the lower end models, and the one and two terabyte versions of the iPad Pro will have 16 gigs 
gigs of RAM, and doesn't look like there's much else to note besides the fact that the new chip is faster than the old chip. Fun fact, the M5 gets 35% better performance in GPU score, 10 to 15% better CPU performance in single and multi-threaded setups. It looks like 12% performance is happening on the IPC, and there's a clock speed increase, and 15% with multi-core performance over the M4. Doesn't look like there's going to be fundamentally a whole lot that's changing about the design of the iPad, but we do get to know a little bit more about the performance. And speaking of mobile chips that go into different things, Qualcomm getting yet another victory in their lawsuit that was happening between them and ARM over their acquisition of Nuvia. You might remember that this happened where ARM was like, hey, you are using our cores because you acquired Nuvia, but you didn't get a licensing deal from us. So now we're going to sue you because you're not choosing to get that. The court already ruled that Qualcomm was innocent in this matter. However, this latest ruling is with regards to whether or not Nuvia violated the licensing terms with this. And it turns out that it was agreed by the court that that is not happening. And so Qualcomm gets off scot-free with this acquisition situation. And we're gonna get, get go off, not not the other word, Therese, who has deals for you, I think. Yo, welcome back to UT Deals, bring the hottest tech deals on the internet. And hey, here's your deals. Starting off, we have this RK Royal Clutch in any low profile wireless 75% mechanical keyboard for only $52.99, making it $37 off. But then next up, we have the Cooler Master NR200 Mini ITX case, available in black for only $67.99, making it $42 off. Yummy, yummy, deal master. And then lastly, we have the crucial T705 Gen 5 NVMe M.2 SSD with a two terabyte variant going for $159.99, making it $40 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You, you can find these. Like I remember you. <laughs> And with that, the deals are done and they're going back to the sky high. Wow, Reese. Well, here's the deal when it comes to Intel's new chips. There's a lot of confusing stuff going on. What's not confusing is that Intel had a tech tour where they showed off everything going on with Panther Lake over in the United States. Their tech tour 2025 happened last week with several different influencers, tech creators, journalists talking about the fact that they were there, but they can't disclose what's actually going on based on uh, this one picture until October 9, 2025 at 6 a.m. Pacific time. So it's very likely that this is due to Panther Lake details where we're going to find out more about those CPUs upcoming. It's going to be Intel's first 18A setup and we do have some leaks that we're going to discuss but I do want to mention that I was supposed to be at this tech tour but I uh, I was moving on the exact dates that they actually were holding this so I wasn't able to attend like I was with the Lunar Lake one but that means I get to talk to you about some of this stuff like the Core Ultra X chips. Yes, Intel got rid of their perfectly good branding of Core i, i3, i5, i9, i7, whatever have you. They replaced it with Core Ultra, Ultra 3, Ultra 5, Ultra 7, and it looks like now they're going to reintroduce a letter and they're going to have the Ultra X5 X7 and Ultra X9, according to multiple different leakers. And we get to see that there's certain chips like the Ultra X7368H. So it appears that this is gonna be coming out alongside Panther Lake, this new naming setup, which is just awful. Core I was such a good branding setup. If you see any value in this, just tell me down below in the comments because I am struggling to figure it out. So I wanna hear from you on that, but what we're hearing on the streets is that Intel and AMD are in discussion to partner up, especially when it comes to Intel's foundries. Now, you might remember the US government invested in Intel recently, NVIDIA and Intel announced a huge partnership and reports are coming out that Intel is trying to get AMD as a customer over at their foundries to make either CPU or GPU chips using Intel's chip making facilities. Now, Tom's Hardware says it's their biggest partnership since KB Lake G, that's not quite necessarily how KB Lake G went down. KB Lake G was a licensing deal between AMD and Intel where Intel paid for the rights to everything going on with Vega graphics in their chips. This is going to be a little bit more of a hand-in-hand uh, -hand partnership. Regardless, there's not a whole lot of details about which chips are going to potentially be made at Intel's foundries, but given the current U.S. government's administration's push to have a lot of things produced domestically and various different moves that have been happening with regards to this, it is likely that this could happen and where we have all three companies just being made at Intel's own foundries. TSMC is supposed to be making more moves and investments when it comes to their US domestication efforts, which could potentially make things a little bit more complicated and who's getting pro what produced where and who gets what incentives. But uh, Intel, AMD partnering up 
potentially. We'll keep you updated as we learn more about that. And what I learned from you guys in last comment responses, um, I hadn't done hot news in a while. I was busy moving, just in case it's not clear from the brand new set. We just got this set up, but it, it's not at all put together completely. So thank you for partnering my dust. I made an international move with my family. I am now living in South Africa and we're going to move forward with all this. So thank you to everybody who uh, is patiently waiting for videos. We're going to get the production stuff set up here at the new South African UFD tech office shortly. The American UFD tech office still going strong. Kyler, Michael, and the new guy are all working from there. This is more of a relocation for me and expansion efforts uh, than it is anything really shutting down anywhere else. We did have one comment from Andy saying, hey Brett, just wondering, since you moved to South Africa, does that mean that the daily breakfast videos premiere time will change according to your time zone? Asking for a friend. Well, number one, uh, in the video that you commented on, I had not yet moved. The move happened after this video and after your comment was published, but it's not quite clear. We have to figure out the workflow. The way it worked before was I was filming Hot News at like 4 p.m. the day before, and then it was releasing at 9 a.m. Right now I'm filming at 10 a.m. South African Standard Time on Thursday, so it's supposed to release at 3 a.m. South African Standard Time. Whether or not that happens, I, I don't know. It'll depend on the editors and like uh, if I can get to work earlier and to get hot news set up earlier at the very most i think we might shift it by an hour to release at 10 a.m but then uh daylight savings time is going to happen in november in which case 9 a.m is going to be 4 p.m south african standard time which is the it's going to be easily doable who knows maybe we might stay on a uh the same schedule where we release at 4 p.m south african standard time and then it just is either 9 or 10 a.m depending on what the u.s decides to do with its nonsense daylight savings time stuff so We'll see, uh, and I'll see you back here for more of the Haas Tech News later in a, in a different episode.